and also not knowing exactly who you're dealing with and, and whether they might be one of these individuals who wants to dominate over you. So, a desire to protect our fundamental interests our most important desires <laughs> will lead us, for all of these reasons, to um, be in conflict with others. Um, all of these may put our lives in jeopardy, and so all of us are going to want to um, protect ourselves from it. I, I want to emphasize that this argument now does not depend on an assumption that all people are monsters does not depend on the assumption that all people are simply interested in harming each other. All it depends on is the possibility of conflicting desires, the possibility of some limited scarcity, uh, and the existence of some people who want to dominate others. Um, so, He summarizes this over on page uh, 76, paragraph 6, what he calls the principal causes of quarrel. So that in the nature of man, we find three principal causes of quarrel. First, competition. <coughs> Second, he says, diffidence, that is distrust. And third, glory. In the next paragraph, he explains these further. He says, the first, that is competition, makes men invade for gain. That is, when there's scarcity, when there's sort of ground level scarcity, conflicting desires, people are going to be in competition with one another over those resources to satisfy their desires. That will bring people into the second, that is diffidence, for safety. In other words, even before there's an actual scarce resource, even before there's an actual conflict over some limited resource, people in anticipation of that possibility are going to want to attack first in order to better protect themselves. And the third, he says, for reputation. Some people just want to enhance their glory by dominating over others, and that also will lead to instability, which will, I mean, one way to think about it is that um, both the second and third um, cause here will precipitate conflict even before there's competition over some scarce risk. That is on page 76, paragraph 6 and 7. Okay, questions about this? So these are the three reasons why people will come into conflict with one another in the state of nature. And as long as we're still in the state of nature, there's no way to resolve these conflicts except by fact, except through physical force. I'm grabbing the coconut and trying to run away with it. You trying to subdue me from doing that. Uh, and knowing that in the future, I may try to grab your coconut and run away with it, and we might get into a fight over it, which could be dangerous to you. You want to beam me over the head before that arises. Furthermore, you might not know whether I'm the kind of person who just likes dominating others, and that could be dangerous to you also. Okay, questions about any of this? So is it just saying that the strong will survive then? Um, or is he still saying that we're all still equal? We're all still equal, and so we're all vulnerable to one another, and uh, it's worse than just, um, it's worse than just being sort of theoretically vulnerable. In the state of nature, we're going to be vulnerable and um, in conflict with one another. This is really bad. Okay, Q. 
here's how bad it is. <coughs> Paragraph 8. Hereby, it is manifest that during the time men live without a common power to keep them all in awe, in the state of nature, we're all relatively equal. There's no one who is so much more powerful than all the rest of us that they can keep us all in awe. Um, right. Uh, in the state of nature, they are in that condition which is called war. And such a war as is of every man against every man. Because war consists not in battle only, or the act of fighting, but is it is a tract of time wherein the will to contend by battle is sufficiently known. So it's like bad weather isn't only the, those instances it's raining, but when it's threatening. And peace, he says, all other time is peace. So the state of nature, for Hobbes, is a state of war. And it's a state of war of all against all, not because everybody would constantly be fighting with one another, but because everybody would constantly be insecure from one another. Everybody would constantly be threatening to fight with one another. Or everybody would be under a threat for a uh, fight from everyone else. So this uncertainty and insecurity of the threat of war, the threat of fighting, is what makes uh, the state of nature a state of war. Questions about that? So the state of nature would be a state of war, and a state of war of all against all. Not constant battles, but there would be insecurity. Okay? Okay. Is this bad? That is what Hobbes is saying. Drawing attention to yourself, this is bad. 